X-Men Blue, number four, by Cullen Bunn and Julian Lopez. The young X-Men fly on the Blackbird, and Jean receives some odd readings from Cerebro. The signal takes them to Arrow Ridge, Colorado. As Warren scans from the air, the others walk the ground until they spot a body. Seeing that his heart has been cut out, they debate their next move when a local sheriff happens upon them with her pistol drawn. She recognizes them from TV, and she assumes they're here for the other mutant she recognized from TV, the one with the claws. They describe Old Man Logan, but this clawed mutant is younger. She describes how he saved her from Wendigo. She also explains that she thinks he's alone and afraid as they all discuss, finding him as a priority for all of them. They keep walking and eventually hear the unmistakable sound of adamantium claws popping out. There he stands before them, telling them they shouldn't have come here. Scott tells Jean to shut him down, but he has some kind of psychic block preventing her from reading his mind. Cyclops blasts a tree above him, and the mutant tells Slim that he missed his chance. Suddenly, Jean blasts him with everything that she has to put him down. They talk, and Beast explains to everyone that this is Wolverine's son, Jimmy Hudson. He pops back up, nearly slashing Iceman. Beast also explains to everyone that they fought a battle with him in another reality, but he wasn't wild like this. He tells them all that he's never going back as Gene explains that they fought Dr. Doom aside him once. As he nearly kills the young teammates, the sheriff unloads the pistol on him as a hulked-up Iceman levels the knockout punch. As he lays motionless, Beast wonders about his healing factor, but the sheriff confirms that he can do it, while Lopez has to draw Bobby flitting around for good measure. As he begins to stir, Gene calls his name and they decide to go to a quiet place to talk. A bar in the snowy outskirts sets the scene, while James explains that he doesn't know where exactly he was afraid the X-Men planned to take him. Scott, too, is confused about this parallel universe talk, and Jean tries her best to recap. They'd met a young mutant who could move between worlds. They ended up in an alternate reality with its own X-Men. Jimmy was there along with other versions of Jean and Iceman. Angel's counterpart was apparently already dead. Jimmy apologizes for not remember any, remembering anything when everything in the tavern begins to rumble and float. They look up to see the new Marauders, alternate X-Men from a different universe, and with that, we're left to be continued. You know, Colin Bunn is doing some awesome work. In the wake of X-Men Gold being so bad, this book continues to excel and set itself apart as the definitive X-Book among all the rest, at least so far. Every character is layered and growing, and the art is crisp and colorful as well, This one is driving to the top of my list to unseat the spot once held so long by Extraordinary X-Men as it has me looking forward to the next one. I give it a solid 9 out of 10. If you like this video, there's hundreds more like it spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the boxes here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdyskidyouknow.blogspot.com or nerdyskidyouknow.com. You can also follow links to my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages, as well as a link to this very issue for sale on my eBay page by clicking below. For the nerdiest kid you know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.